Hi guys, Tony here. Today we've got on the podcast Victor Matos, who comes from the SD Wellness Center over in the Dominican Republic. It's the most comprehensive functional medicine center over there. In this episode, we're gonna be comparing synthetic testosterone with bioidentical and just looking at the differences in both performance and longevity. So if we quickly go on to, so testosterone, like synthetic testosterone versus bioidentical, I've heard different opinions yeah. on that, the benefits of being on bioidentical, what would you say on that? Okay, so um, there is a big difference is, and the difference is related not only to the uh, chemical um, production of both, but also there is a physiological or pharmacy pharmaceutical physiologic um, difference in between. So the thing is that synthetic um, testosterone uh, attach to the receptor of testosterone, to the androgen receptor, attach only and only by a chemical attachment. So there is a chemical drug that goes and activate the receptor because it have a chemical linkage to the receptor. So, but the thing is that not only androgen receptor, all the receptors in our body also have a, has a shape, okay? So the, the, why it has a shape? Because it, have, it requires that a drug or hormones or whatever goes inside the receptor not only has a chemical attachment, but also has, needs a morphological attachment. So the hormones needs the same shape of the receptor. It's like a secondary protection. So none other hormones can go inside a uh, androgen receptor or any other receptor. Uh, right, okay. so, so the big difference between the synthetic testosterone and bioidentical testosterone is on the receptor uh, linkage. So the bioidentical receptor, as the name says, bioidentical is because it attaches, the hormones attaches to, re, to the receptor because it not only has the chemical attachment, also has a morphological attachment. So what happened? Why, why is that necessary? Because when you have a chemical only attachment, the receptor sends a message, sends a signal to your DNA telling, well, this is okay. This can open and stimulate my function, but this is not mine. Check out the pinned comment down below and join the many getting great results with Epic Genetics. And it will keep telling your DNA that this is not mine. This is not. Um, this is. This hasn't. This hasn't been built for me. So you need to change the shape of the receptor. And you don't have in your DNA a gene that can codify a receptor for a synthetic testosterone. All right. Okay. Right? So it causes mutations. Uh, so right. it can trigger mutations on the receptor. And that can be related not only to um, apoptosis, which is one of the problems that the, that the DNA can trigger. Um, mm. When DNA, DNA sense that is damaged, it can trigger apoptosis. Well, so it kills the actual receptor, the cell. Yeah. Right. So, but also can stimulate... Um, uh, mutation on the cell and it can probably stimulate proliferation on that mutation with which can convert into cancer right. so yes testosterone is an uh, excellent drug for um, of course you cannot use testosterone for the rest of your life um, uh, I mean the synthetic testosterone cannot be used for long periods because of that problem. So if you ask me which case I use testosterone, synthetic testosterone, and which case I use bioidentical testosterone. So 
if you're going to require testosterone for the rest of your life, like a lot of people do, then I will indicate bioidentical testosterone. If you just need testosterone because, because you need a boost or because you want to improve your, your or sun uh, sexual drive or you want to improve your, um, your muscle strength or you just, you just have a target in um, like could be a physical target like uh, training or um, you you are a heavy weight lifter or, yeah. or you want to go to a, a, to a podium then uh, testosterone synthetic testosterone could achieve that target uh, sooner is it, is it more slightly more androgenic um, synthetic testosterone? I've, I have heard that, but I wasn't sure if that's true. It, it, it is more androgenic. It you see more effect immediately than bioidentical testosterone. The bioidentical testosterone you will always use um, uh, controlled doses. You don't use extremely high doses. So um, yes, you will target more androgenic effect. Uh, with um, bio uh, synthetic hormone than bioidentical, but if you come to my console and 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 you have uh, declining testosterone production, then probably uh, it doesn't matter the age, because um, yes, of course, if 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 if, if the patient is fifty or forty five or over fifty years old, then probably I won't consider synthetic testosterone anyway, because uh, it, it tells me that this patient, will this patient will require testosterone for the rest of his life. Mm -hmm. So I won't use something that, I, that can actually trigger some secondary effect. So um, bioidentical hormone is the best choice in that case, but I also recommend bioidentical hormones to uh, 25, 20, uh, 30 years old patients with a hypo hypogonadism that we have done some trials to increase the production, to stimulate the productions from the hypothalamus and it has no response. So I end up telling him, well, you know what? You will require hormones for the rest of your life probably. So it's better to go over a bioidentical um, form of hormones okay. of testosterone and is it is yeah. it's a little bit more expensive isn't it bioidentical it's more expensive but i think that in times there are different ways to use uh there are different forms like uh, if you're starting with a the the lowest age or the highest age um i always use uh sublingual or cream it depends if the patient in highest age I prefer sublingual because sublingual reach um, reach the brains the brain uh, faster, and it can get you can get benefits for on on the hormone in the brain. Uh, the cream doesn't reach the brain that much, but it um, it, it can increase your testosterone um, in in a more steady state. It lasts longer during the day. So I use cream in um, in younger person that I have to use testosterone. I use sublingual in the oldest one, but in the middle age, in the average uh, um, people that require testosterone because of the uh, hormone decline, I use pellets. Right. So I use the pellets, which is uh, probably four to six months uh, supply. So if the patient um, supplies last for six months, then it's definitely cheaper use by identical testosterone than synthetic testosterone. Ah, okay. So, so if it lasts four months, then maybe it will be the, the same, uh, the same price, the same amount of money you will spend. Um, but definitely, uh, I, that, that's not my uh, criteria for the decision. My criteria for the decision is 
related to if the patient cannot use synthetic because some uh, potential secondary effect or because I know that it will require testosterone for long period or probably for the rest of his life which is most people isn't it because if you're going to be on testosterone it'll, it's going to shut you down regardless so the longer you're on it synthetic or not then the more it's going to shut down your natural supplies so yeah yeah it it will uh there are some people that you give uh three months uh cycling and then they recover mm with some post cyclos uh, medication, of course. Uh, but yes, the, the biggest experience is that people that has been cycling with testosterone in the past are requiring testosterone um, faster than the normal, normal declining uh, period. So mm -hmm. if you use testosterone in your 20s, then it means that your decline um, will start faster than people who hasn't used testosterone uh, while they were younger or in a training period of their life. Mm. Okay. Yeah. No, thanks. You really explained that well. That's kind of uh, opened my eyes a little bit because I'm very, you know, longevity focused. So I mean, the age of 37, I've been on synthetic for a couple of years, but maybe I should look into the switch and go bioidentical. Well, if you decide to go on synthetic for long periods, then it has to be a really low dose testosterone. So um, there are people who you can keep in on testosterone, synthetic testosterone, but uh, not the normal um, doses that you see in the market. Like uh, there's a lot of coaches that indicate testosterone because they want to achieve uh, some specific target on the patient. Uh, but yes, a coach wants that wants to see changes fast. But that's not the whole idea of doing hormone replacement. Mm. So if you decide to stay for a long period on cipionate, for example, then it has to be a low dose. Probably what, what I call low dose is um, 0 0.6, 0 0.8 um, milligrams over uh, kilograms of, of weight every 10 days. Okay, I'm trying to come back that into my head. I mean, <laughs> for, the, for the average size man, um... What would that 75, be? 75 kilos, then probably 60 milligrams per week or every 10 days. Right, 60 yeah. milligrams per week. Yes, that's pretty low. Then I'm on um, 130, yeah. mili 130 yeah. milligrams a week. So which is, I don't know, it depends who you talk to. It's a fairly moderate dose, to, especially in by American standards. But then... The thing is that, well, yes, yeah. I, I, I don't know in, uh, what kind of... Um, measure units you're using. But the thing is that everything that is over the amount that your body will use will go for uh, an adverse effect mm -hmm. immediately. Okay. So yeah. you should stay lower than your body. And remember that the body's, the body's uh, body uses uh, around 10, uh, 10 to 12 milligrams a day. That's right. Yeah, I've heard that. So obviously, you know, it's not when you take 60 milligrams or 100 milligrams, whatever it is, obviously you're not not every bit of that's bioavailable. So you're not going to convert every bit of that into usable testosterone, but still a, a significant proportion. So if your body is getting more than 10 milligrams a day, then, yeah, as you say, it's not all going to be it's going to so be. There, over there's a, there is one one way to to measure and see if really you, it's not, it's not measuring testosterone the way that will tell you that your body is actually using testosterone um, as it's supposed to. If, if you do the FSH and the LH, you will see that your hypothalamus, hypothalamus has been um, abolished by the testosterone you're using. Mm. 
So if the um, FSH and LH, the gonadotropins, are quite too low, then it tells you that your doses is way too high. Yeah, and that's what mine is. Mine is next to nothing, my LH and FSH. So yeah, that yeah. tells me that. So that, that definitely tells you that you probably required less or mm. that you probably will achieve the same uh, target with less. Mm. Because uh, yes, more means, but more of everything, but include includes more of the uh, adverse effects. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, because I've seen people's blood work where they've been on bioidentical when and I see their LH is higher than mine. So that probably, yeah, that's the reason. Yeah. 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 I mean, you will never achieve. And if you want to use, if you try to use bioidentical hormone for uh, specific targets, like uh, I want to compete, uh, then no, then that, that, that it's actually impossible. You won't compete. Uh, by using uh, bioidentical hormone alone. So you will probably require something more mm. powerful than, than yeah. that. Okay. Than. Yeah, so that makes sense. It's more bioidentical, more focused towards longevity, health and longevity, whereas synthetics okay. more for muscle gains and et cetera, yeah. Exactly. So, so I think that if you ask me, uh, we haven't get there yet, but if you ask me what is the the um, the most advanced technique for longevity i will definitely say hormone because there are many other things that you can do for longevity like the ones that you mentioned before to me um, um peptides or um Things like epitalon, uh, ipamorelin, um, sermorelin, the semats, all those things that can all, all telomere, telomere uh, enlarge a man. But the only thing that your body wastes in time and doesn't produce, produce the same is testosterone. I mean, you will always produce, if you don't have a, pancreatic injury, you can always produce insulin. It doesn't matter you are 10 years old or 75 years old, you can produce insulin. Uh, you can produce many other hormones or many other um, enzymes in your body, but the only thing that you won't produce the same while you're 15 years old or while you are 75 years old, is testosterone. Mm -hmm. That won't be the same, definitely. Okay. So yes, testosterone is probably the, the longevity um, novel, yeah. I think. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, I've, I've heard that. And it kind of signals your body when your testosterone gets low that signals other aging processes in your body. Yeah. There are many signals that will tell your, and, and also the most important thing is not the signals that tells your body needs testosterone are the signals that the lack of testosterone tell to your DNA. It actually, there is a relationship in between where the apoptotic genes activates and the declining hormones. So, so while the declining, the hormones are declining, the apoptotic genes starts activating. Okay. So those are the signals that tells your body, hey, this is over. Let's go. Let's go out of here. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, it's been really enlightening that. Yeah, we've really covered that well.